Let's work on the section 1.1, merging tiles. We saw that we have these four different tiles. I want to merge them together into a single raster. Let's learn some tricks. The first one I'm going to show you is this format called virtual raster. When you have a lot of these tiles, they are occupying some space on your disk. Right? You have these four tiles already downloaded. If you want to merge them and you say, I want to create another file, that means it's going to occupy the same space again on your disk. Sometimes you says, I just want to merge them, but I don't want to file. I just want to work with those styles as if they were the single raster, but I don't want to create a new raster. And this is a very common practice because raster data is large. You have terabytes of data. You don't want to merge them and create terabytes of other data. So you can instead create something called a virtual raster, which will describe to Jira that this whole thing is a single raster. Work with it like a single raster, but don't actually create the file. So here we can use this virtual raster format to describe that this all four tiles should be a single mosaic, but do not create an actual file on the disk. So let's see how to do this. We're going to use this command called gdal virtual raster. You, it takes a list of file input files and it'll create the merged version of this. Since we have, we may have a lot of files, it might be useful to just create a list of files. So the gdal virtual raster command, the gdal build brt command can take a list of files. Let's just learn about this gdal build brt command. This command builds a brt from a list of data set. The way to read this command is gdal build brt, options, 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 the name of the output brt, and a list of input rasters. So you can say gdal build brt, the name of the output brt you want to create, and you just give the list of files on the command, one after the other. But what if we have 10,000 files? This can get pretty unwieldy. So instead, there's one option that is available here, which will be input file list. So it says you can give a text file containing the list of all the files that would be used as input. And this is a kind of best practice where you have a lot of files, you create a text file containing the list of all the files and use the list of files file list as an input to this command. So we'll use this option. But first, we need to learn how to build a file list like this. We're going to use the command itself to create this file. So first, I want to show it to you on my system. I can use this command ls, which is the list command, and I can say star.hdt. So this says list all the files which end with .hdt extension. So if I do this, I'll get a list of these four files. So I have those files. If I had 1,000 files, it'll give me a list of 1,000 files. The command prompt also allows you to say whatever output this generates, you can put this into a new file. So this greater than symbol says you can now pipe this output into other file. So now I can say I need a file for my next command. So I will going to use this to create a file. So I'm going to name my file as filelist.txt. So I say ls star.htt greater than filelist.txt. There's space between those two. So it says whatever this output of this command, put this into this file. I run this, I get no output because all the output went to the file. You can see there's a file list.txt here. And this file was just created using the command with the list of four files. So let's try this out on Windows. You'll use this command, dir, dir is equivalent of ls. The slash b says, do not print any extra information. When you just type dir, it's gonna print a lot of other information, file size and permissions and all of that. It said, don't print that. Dash B is bad. Just give me a bad listing. And of all the files that end with star.htt, put them into this new file called filelist.txt. Once you run this, if the command prompt returns without an error, that means the file is created, go and look inside your SRTM folder. You should see this file that you just created. And once the file is set, we can move to the next step. So now I have this four HTT files and a file list containing the list of those files. Now is the time for magic. Let's type our command, gdal build vrt. I can also type the command not to complete. It's going to auto complete the command name. I have this option, input underscore file underscore list. And we're going to give the file list. So this is our file list. And we're just going to create a new file called merge.vrt. .vrt signifies this is a virtual raster. And this is going to use these four files and merge them and create a vrt file. You can copy paste the command from your course material. This is here. So you can copy paste this command here. 
and we can run this. So I'm going to create this VRT, press enter. And you can see this progress bar. This is the progress bar that you'll all become highly familiar with. GDAL prints this progress bar. In this case, it was instant because it just created this file that describes how the end file should be mosaic. In your folder, you will now see this merge.vrt file. You can see this file is very small, just two kilobytes. Our original files were 25 megabytes, but we just have this two kilobyte file. What happened was this is just a text file which says, I have, I am a mosaic of this other four files. It just describes how to create that. But GDAL can now use this file as if it was just the whole file itself. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to open up QGIS. You can see these are the four individual files that I loaded. I'm just going to drag and drop the merge.vrt. I'm going to open this merge.vrt in QGIS. It's just a single file. QGIS says, I know how to create this file. It's just the merged version of these four files. So I could create this mosaic every tool that needs a raster file can work with this VRT file as if it was just an actual file, but I didn't have to occupy any of this space. And I can just say, QGIS will just behave as if it was a single file. If I want to clip it, I can clip it. I can you know, do some use this in analysis. It'll just behave like a full mosaic raster, but it doesn't occupy the space. Super helpful. VRTs will help you save this space, but still work with a bunch of files as if it was a single mosaic. You might be thinking, if my colleague needs this mosaic, should I just send them the merge.vrt file? No, because VRT file will need the actual files. So it's just a reference to your other file as well. So if you want to send this file to somebody, send them all the four files along with the VRT, and then they'll be able to open the VRT. Let's do our first exercise to work with this VRT file and compute some statistics.